Hello and welcome to worship from Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in La Crescent, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Carrie Jonas. I am the interim lead pastor here. We are a church of the ELCA and Pastor Anna Sorensen also serves here as pastor. It is Holy Trinity Sunday, this coming Sunday, and so our worship revolves around that mystery of this God that we worship in three persons. So take a moment, wherever you are watching this service, to center yourselves, focus on why you are online today worshiping God. So let's just take a moment to get ready for worship. We begin our service with confession and forgiveness. We will be having Holy Communion this Sunday as well in this, in this online worship. And so we always, before we receive that meal, confess our sins and hear those words of forgiveness. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Creator, an ever-living God. We worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last to your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, Amen. The Gospel for the Holy Trinity Sunday comes from Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now, the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord. But some doubted. Did you hear that in the gospel? Here is what is happening. It is right after the resurrection in the Gospel of Matthew. Eleven disciples go up a mountain with Jesus to worship and eventually receive a commissioning. 
and some doubted. These words really stuck out for me this week on the reading of Matthew's Gospel. And I kind of love that notion that some doubted. Or at least I find it comforting. Just think about it. These are the people who were there with Jesus throughout his ministry. They saw his miracles. They heard his words. They witnessed his death. And these are the people who actually witnessed the result of resurrection because here he is, Jesus in the flesh. And yet, they are gathered on that mountain and some doubted. Now, why do I love this? Well, because if some of these people who were actually with Jesus doubted, it leaves room for the rest of us that dance throughout our lives between faith and doubt and back again. Because isn't that how it goes? Even for those of us who are church-going types, who strive to believe, there are times we struggle with doubt. But as people who strive to be faithful, we know that when we struggle with doubt, we need to come here, come together to hear the word, to eat the meal. We need each other to carry us through those times when the strength of our faith seems to be slipping through our fingers. But we also know others. We may know people who struggle with doubt so much that they actually cut themselves off from the church community that gathers either here in the building or online. We know people who, in their doubt, they just kind of wander away. Or they profess to have so much trouble believing, they, they can't bring themselves to gather with us. People they think are so solid in their faith all the time, without fail. So what happens? These folks leave behind this very community that will sustain them when they are struggling in their faith life. And I, I wonder, perhaps, is this because, as a people of faith, we too often don't speak openly of our own times of doubt and struggle when it comes to our faith? And maybe we don't talk about those doubt-filled times in our lives because we think of them as signs of weakness. And as a community, we fail to say, yes, I have been in your shoes. I have had times when believing is hard. Could it be because we don't often speak about our own doubt? We leave the impression that doubt is just not part of our faith journey. And I wonder if in our silence then, we tend to make those who are more honest about their experience of faith and doubt feel like they don't have a place here among us. I recall a story of a baccalaureate service that occurred a number of years ago now. A high school senior stepped to the podium to bravely tell her faith story. Only unlike many of the witnesses of that kind of occasion, her story was not one of unwavering faith. Rather, this high school senior spoke of how she had taken her faith for granted 
as a child and so was so unprepared for the day when her life threw her a whammy and called her faith into question. And she spoke specifically of a time in her life when she was filled with anger toward God and questioned where God was. And this all happened when a good friend of hers was diagnosed with cancer. And she spoke brutally of spending a long night with this lifelong friend, watching as he took his last breath. And she spoke about how her prayers moved in that time. From anger and resentment to acceptance, and then finally, a long time later, into gratitude. And she spoke about understanding that she came to the knowledge that God is not one that will steer us clear of all of our problems and answer all of our questions, but she learned about a God that simply walked with her through all of it. She was 18 years old, and her words were honest and mature and faithful in a way one does not always hear. And then, in that baccalaureate service, this happened. Another speaker arose, a pastor from within the community stepped to the pulpit to speak to these soon-to-be graduates about the importance of faith. Only in his talk, there was a contrast to the high school senior's witness. This pastor spoke of a time when he was called in to pray for a friend who had cancer as well, and how that cancer left that friend. He was healed, and cancer never returned again. Now, I believe prayer can be answered in that very miraculous way sometimes, as this pastor described. But hearing his story so closely on the heels of this student's experience, one could be left with the understanding that if only one has enough faith, God will give you whatever you want. But I have to say, my experience with how God works follows more closely to that witness of the high school senior. It's a journey of faith through to doubt, back to faith. It's a journey where God sometimes feels very far away to an understanding of God's presence, even in my darkest times. So yes, I am grateful to stand here today in the words of this gospel from Matthew. I'm grateful for the powerful commission Jesus gave those followers to go out. But even more than that, I'm grateful that Matthew names that they were a community gathered together. They needed each other to do the work. But here's the thing. Look who Jesus called to do that work. Both those who had faith that was firm as a rock, and he also called those who struggled and doubted. He called them both because isn't that the same today? Jesus calls us out. Those who God's given the gift of a strong faith, but Jesus also calls those of us whose faith is maybe not at peak performance. For if we speak the truth, that is surely all of us at one time or another. And frankly, wherever we find ourselves today in our faith walk, this is certain. 
we belong. We belong in this church gathering of God's people. Jesus calls us here. He wants us here. And wherever your faith is today, you are called by Jesus, our companion, a friend who promises wherever we are in our faith life, he will always be with us, even to the end of the age. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples and you call us, despite our abilities, despite the strength of our faith, you call us at any given moment Help us to trust your continued work in us for the sake of this world. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. We pray you raise up leaders who listen earnestly, who speak honestly, and govern justly. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give you thanks for the witness of Charlie Bubbers, Claire Rood, John Erickson, and all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection life in the age to come. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. At this time in our worship service, it's usually offering time. And so I want you to prayerfully consider a gift to Prince of Peace in thanksgiving for the ministries that we share together as the body of Christ. And also, if you would like to at this moment, pause your video and gather together some bread and some wine, some crackers and some juice, whatever you have available to commune with the church throughout the world. And so 
We will do that now in our worship service. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And whatever elements you have at home, I suggest just have your hands hover above those elements as we offer this. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine that they become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And with the Holy Spirit present, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the body of Christ given for you and receive the blood of Christ shed for you. We pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's faith shine upon you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Oh,